So, and that's why she invites us to, to come to her. And this is an important thing that I want to sort of focus on today. Uh, some of you already know about this, if you heard me speak in other places, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important thing, so I want to, I want to emphasize it today. And it also it shows how, how um, precise uh, the Holy Spirit is in inspiring uh, the scriptures. He, he says exactly what he wants to say. And so, um, in this passage where she says, come to me, all you who desire me, and be filled with my fruits, well, the, the, the Latin word that's used here is not the usual word for come to me. That would, that would be venite me, just, just, just come to me. But the word that's used here is transite me, which means come over to me, come across to me. Um, and so there's a, there's a different nuance of, of meaning here. And it suggests something I was talking about earlier in the day, about, about the, the, um, the serious and kind of exclusive nature of our, of our consecration. Because when she says, come across to me, it's like, like where is she? She's with God in, in heaven, okay? And she wants us to, to be with her. So she has come across to me. That means we have to kind of spiritually seen, kind of leave this world and go over to her. Not physically leave this world, although we will in the end. But uh, um, we have to, in, in spirit and in heart and in desire and intention, we have to come across to her. We have to like, it, it, it kind of suggests passing this point of no return, sort of, sort of burning our bridges behind us, that she calls us to come over to where she is so she can take us into her heart. And when we respond, as we do through the consecration, then we come across to her and we're finished with everything else that's the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's what we leave behind and never look back when we come across to Our Lady. But now, the, the, the similar thing is, is the case in any uh, serious and permanent commitment that, that we make. When, whenever you embrace something or someone, you have to let go of something or someone else. Or, or everything else. Like when you when you get married, for example, you, you choose a spouse, okay? That means, okay, you, you found the love of your life, great. So you, you've chosen this person as your spouse, which means by that very, that very fact, you have rejected every other possible spouse in the whole world. You have rejected billions of people to be your spouse because you chose one. And so, in making that one choice, you've chosen this one person, and you have had to set aside everybody else. And the same thing when someone makes a commitment to, to priesthood or religious life. You, first of all, you renounce all possibility for, for any spouse, and then you renounce also all possibilities for, for other uh, occupations and for other, other things that most people do in the world. That suddenly these don't belong to your vocation anymore because you've chosen the, the one thing that you desire. And, and that's what she says here too with this. Come over to me, come across to me, you who desire me. So what when we find the object of our desire, and we are we are moved to to go to that object. That's that's really kind of the kind of the, the philosophical definition or description of, of love is that you discover something uh, that uh, that you, you perceive as being desirable in, through your through your intellect and your senses. And then, you're, because it is desirable, it, it, it exercises an, an attractive power upon you, and so then you move your will toward the object of your desire to embrace and possess and surrender to it. So, so at that very basic level, we can see when she says, come over to me, you who desire me, she's saying, um, I want my heart to be an object of your love. 
And so, when you choose my heart, and everything that this implies, it implies the whole mystery, because she is inseparably united to Christ, and separately united to the Father and the Holy Spirit. So, so she is like the, 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 the gate of heaven. You know, there's a, there's a beautiful uh, passage in the, in the prophet Ezekiel. You know, that's the Father's love going through the Old Testament and finding all these things that relate to our Lord and Our Lady, kind of hidden in, in the text of the Old Testament. And so Our Lady has been called for, for centuries uh, the gate of heaven. And there's a passage in Ezekiel where he talks about um, the, the, the temple and, and about, about the gate that is turned toward the east. And so this is kind of like an image of Our Lady in the, in the heart, in the mystery of the Holy Trinity. So that, so that when she says, I want my heart to be an object of your love and desire, so come to me, but when we come to her, we discover that her heart is, is, she is the temple of the Lord, and her heart is the gate that's turned toward the east, toward the east, the, the, the orient. That's one of the names, of, uh, obscure sort of names for, for, for Christ that we find. It comes up in the Benedictus and a couple places in the prophets. Um, that she is turned toward the east, her whole being is turned toward the east, toward the rising sun, toward her risen sun. And so when we come to her, we find in her heart the gate of heaven that is always turned toward the east. And so that's why in uniting ourselves to her immaculate heart, we always unite ourselves to the most holy trinity because she is in her very being turned toward the east. Just, just like in a similar way, not exactly the same way, but, but the way that, that, that Christ in the Holy Trinity is turned toward the Father. And that's what it says in the, the, uh, the original Greek of the, the prologue of the Gospel of John, where it, they, they, they never translate it right. Usually it says, uh, the, 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 uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. But it doesn't say that in the original Greek. It doesn't say the word was with God. It says the word was toward God. It's a much more expressive, powerful word because it implies a relationship, not just a, a being there, but a turning toward. And so, so that means he is the, the eternal word is, is eternally uh, turned toward the Father, his whole being comes from the Father and is, and is turned to the Father and is bound to the Father by the, by the Holy Spirit. And so, so Mary, in an analogous way, is, is the, her heart is the gate that's turned toward the East. That she in her very being, not as a divine person, she's still a creature, but a, a sanctified creature beyond all others. Her heart is also turned toward God in her very being, so that by uniting to her heart, we also turn toward God in our very being. That's why she can say, come to me, come over, come across to me, leave everything else behind. You who desire me, come to me, because I am turned toward God. And when you come enter into union with me, you also shall be turned toward God, but in a very special way because you will be turning with me and in me and, and as, as like a, a, a part of, of her way that she stands before God. We, we enter into it, we share it, we, we live from it. And it's something that's, that's very uh, beautiful. And that's why the, the mystery of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is, is so profound, you know, it's, it's ordinary piety just doesn't kind of do it justice. You just have these pictures of the hearts and everything and you just think how nice, whatever. But it's like, this is, a, this is an incredibly unfathomable, profound mystery of who and what she is, what God has made her to be, and how she is a way that we can enter into the, the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And so that brings us then over to, to the gospel, and, and which also gives us some indication about um, what I said at the 
the beginning of our mediators of all grace, and in me is all grace, she said. Well, at the at the, the death of Jesus, and, and at this this place, this is this is where Jesus uh, gave us Mary as his mother, because this was a, this was his plan from, from all eternity. He didn't just decide stuff on the spot and say, oh, it would be a nice thing if, if my disciples had a mother. Well, no, this was planned all the way from, from all eternity. Every, every detail of, of the life of the incarnate God, Christ, and, the, and of the, the Blessed Virgin Mary was all known and, and prepared from the very beginning. And so he knew exactly what he was doing then and why. And so, so this was part of his saving work the giving of, of his mother. And that's, that's another little mystery hidden in the scripture there because, because it says clearly in the scripture, as soon as Jesus said to John, behold your mother, the gospel says, after this, Jesus, knowing that everything was now finished, then he, he took the, the, the sour wine and bowed his head and died. So, if only after this, after the giving of his mother to us on the cross, only after this, what did he now know that his work was finished? He could, he could die and, and then arise in three days. So that means giving Mary to us as our mother is part of his work part of his saving work, part of our redemption. And so only after that what was it uh, complete. And not, not only that, is that when he died, and this is part of the fullness of grace uh, for our sake, is that it says again in the Greek, it doesn't usually come across in the English translations, when it says he died, it says he, he gave up his spirit or something like that. Well, literally it says, when he, at the moment of his death, he handed over the Spirit. So that means, when he died, he, he, Mary became uh, already mediation of grace. It began at the, at the visitation, I explained before, but here he's, he's handing over the Spirit. He's saying, I'm, I'm going now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm dying, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming back to this earth in the flesh. So the Holy Spirit has to uh, take over the church henceforth. And so I give you, Mother, I hand over the Spirit to you because I'm going and you are going to be the, the contemplative part of my church. And so she became Mother of all because she provides for all with the grace of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave to her as he died on his cross. With his last breath, he breathed the Holy Spirit into her immaculate heart to equip her to be at the heart of the, the new church that he just founded. And then uh, also, uh, St. John Paul says something very beautiful and, and powerful about the presence of Our Lady at the cross and constantly with us. Because he says um, that um, what happens, I mean, at, at, the, at the Mass, at the offering of the sacrifice of the Mass, the, whatever happened on Calvary for our salvation is represented here, and the grace of it, the gift of it, is communicated to us every time we offer the holy sacrifice and receive the precious body and blood of Christ. And so he, in his reflection, he noticed, and most people didn't notice, I didn't even think of it myself until I read it, he said, well, what did happen on Calvary? Uh, it's obvious that Jesus offered the sacrifice of himself for the salvation of the world. That's, that's the that's, essence of what happened on Calvary and what happens here on our altars. But he said, something else also happened on Calvary. Jesus said, behold your mother to his disciple John, which means to, to all uh, of his disciples in all ages. So since that happened on Calvary, and since we just learned that Jesus' work was not finished on Calvary until he gave us his mother, 
then St. John Paul says, at every Mass, the gift of Mary as our mother is renewed, just as the gift and the power and the presence of the sacrifice of Christ for our salvation is renewed at every Mass, also the gift of Mary as our mother is renewed at every Mass. And so we should, we should be aware of that, be aware of how profoundly and intimately she is involved in our lives, our, our worship, our, our prayer, everything, because she is the mother, she is the mediatrix, she is the gate of heaven turned toward the east. She is the one who says, come across over to me, leave everything else behind. If you desire me, come to me, I will take you where I am in the heart of the most holy trinity. And so that's why we are devoted to her immaculate heart. That's why we honor her so much and love her. Because, because God loves her more than anybody else. The saints all say this. They all say that God loves her, delights in her more than every other saint and angel all put together. Because she is, she is everything to him in the, in the sense that she made it possible for God to become man and to save the world. And that's, that's the only thing what God wanted to do. Once he created us and, and we fell instantly, uh, he had to save us. That's, the only, that, that's his, his preoccupation since the beginning. And it's going to be his preoccupation until the end of time, the salvation of souls. That's why I said the thing about those, the chaplain, the save a soul thing. We, we, we got to help out God in this because he, that's all he wants to do, to save souls. We got all eternity to, to sit back and just and, and contemplate his divinity forever. And we, we will, and that's, that's what we're made for. But in the meantime, and while we're still here, we got to help him save souls because that's all he's concerned about because he loves us so much that he does not want to lose any of us. And he has, he has commissioned Our Lady to be at the, at the heart of this mission that she brings his grace to us. And she's totally involved in everything that goes on in this world and in the church because she does not rest until all of her children have come back safely home. And we, we should desire to, to share this, this mission with her. And not only to honor her as we ought to, but really to give of ourselves to, to share in the mission that she has received from God so that we can be where she is in the heart of the Most Holy Trinity. And we can do this, as it also says finally here in the, in the Gospel, once John uh, uh, heard that Mary was to be his mother, the Gospel says, and again, the translation is, is, not, is not right here, but it's, it's, it's awkward in the Greek, so they, they made it a little bit easier to understand the English, where it says, uh, after this, from that very hour, the disciple took her into his own home. But literally, it says, he took her into his own things, which, which, which has a broader interpretation, not just to, to live with him materially, because he could do that with her, but we can't do that with her, but we can take her into our own things, as St. John Paul says again, what that means is we take her into everything that makes up our inner life. That's our own things. And we take Mary into that because God has given her to us for that. We are to welcome her into this, this home of our hearts, to all of our things, to all of our thoughts and feelings and desires and struggles. Take her into your own things. That's what she's given to us for. And that's why she says, come to me, come across to me. Leave the other things aside because they don't take you to heaven. They take you the other way. Come to me, I know how to take you to heaven. And I will do it because this is my mission from God who made me just for this, to bring the Savior into the world and then to help him continue his saving work until the end of time. That's what we're celebrating when we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary and all of her mysteries. And so let us give thanks to God for this great gift and let it be an incentive for you to, to make the consecration, to be a part of this, to enter profoundly into this mystery in a, in a solemn uh, uh, way that, that's, that's irrevocable. Just like when she says that you know, for your consecration, when you make the consecration, you don't look back. You don't, you don't go back to 
anything that was a cause of sin in your life before because you're consecrated, you're set apart now. And so she says that, come to me, leave everything else behind. If you desire me, then come to me because in me is all grace of the way and the truth and the life. And I know how to take you there. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.